Egypt is home to some of the most spectacular wonders of both the ancient and natural worlds. From the almost impossible, impressive and awe-inspiring pyramids to the fearsomely beautiful Nile River and the powerful civilizations that rose and fell alongside its banks, Egypt is steeped in ancient beauty and mystery as old as the land itself. The marvels hidden within its lands date back to biblical times and endure to this day as a testament to the incredible power and technology of the Egyptians that we still don't fully understand. The Reincarnation of Dorothy Eady Among the most fascinating reincarnation stories is that of Dorothy Eady a woman who is believed to have been a priestess and a pharaoh's lover in her previous life many thousand years in the past. Dorothy was born into a wealthy family from England back in 1904. She led a normal life until that fateful day when she fell off the stairs injuring her head drastically. Everyone including doctors and her parents thought she had lost her life. However, she later miraculously woke and her life was different. The actions of the three-year-old were not those of an ordinary child and her parents had noticed it. On many occasions, Dorothy demanded her parents to take her back home to Egypt. She was certain she recalled her previous life, that she was born across the sea in Pharaohland, Egypt. She also recounted astonishing details from her time as a priestess in Egypt. From the accounts that she gave, she was called Ben Treshti and served at Pharaoh Seti's court. This child drove her parents crazy and no one could explain her sudden behavior change. In one instance, when she was taken by her parents to visit the London British Museum, she acted even more strangely when they got in the Egyptian galleries, which were full of mummies and statues of Egyptian gods and goddesses. She ran towards them and started kissing their feet uncontrollably. Immediately after, she started screaming in an ancient, unfamiliar voice, which shocked her parents even more. At 15 years old, as she was studying the Egyptian history, the teenager had a lucid dream with Pharaoh Seti's mummy an encounter that resurfaced many memories of her previous life which made her start filling out her reincarnation puzzle. All of these unfolding events made Dorothy leave Christianity to embrace the polytheistic religion of ancient Egypt. Her ability to quickly learn the Egyptian symbols and hieroglyphs at the British Museum astounded her teachers, but she explained to them that she was not learning a new language, but rather recalling a language that she had forgotten. Dorothy got married to an Egyptian student she met in England and moved to Egypt where they lived. Upon reaching Egypt, Dorothy kissed the grounds, saying that she was finally home to stay. She had a son whom she named Seti. She tried very hard her whole life to put together pieces of a thousand-year-old puzzle of her reincarnation. Egyptologists would even later go on to prove the legitimacy of Dorothy's fluency in Egyptian after they began studying neighboring native languages that arose and evolved from Egyptian in the area and found their slang and accents to directly mimic certain sounds, words and pronunciations by Dorothy. This wasn't the height of her accomplishments, however, as she would later go on to help uncover many locations of ancient Egyptian sites buried beneath sand, discover secret chambers and assist with the recovery of long-forgotten and hidden ancient Egyptian artifacts. In 1979, the New York Times wrote a piece on Dorothy that regarded her as the Western world's most intriguing and convincing modern case of reincarnation. The Lost Labyrinth of Egypt The impressive pyramids and massive structures that line the banks of the Nile River have long baffled historians and tourists alike and we can only guess at how the ancient civilization managed to complete such enormous marvels of engineering. But this puzzlement does not stop at our own time period. Records of visitors professing their astonishment at Egyptian construction date back even thousands of years. In fact, some of these records indicate that at one point there might have been a structure even more impressive than the pyramids to behold. Many ancient visitors to Egypt described an incredibly sprawling temple complex that they referred to as the Labyrinth due to its twisting corridors and hallways so intricate that one would only be able to successfully navigate the interior in the company of a knowledgeable guide. This labyrinth was documented in writings beginning in the 3rd century BC and continuing through the 1st century AD by ancient authors as well as ancient Greek historian Herodotus who wrote of his experience visiting Egypt. This I have actually seen, a work beyond words. 
For if anyone put together the buildings of the Greeks and display of their labours, they would seem lesser in both effort and expense to this labyrinth. Even the pyramids are beyond words, and each was equal to many and mighty works of the Greeks, yet the labyrinth surpasses even the pyramids. The varying accounts, although occurring centuries apart, are all relatively consistent enough to allow us to paint a general picture of what the structure might have looked like. However, none of these accounts indicate whether the passages were maze-like as a deterrent to intruders or as a show of the wealth and power of the Egyptians. The labyrinth was said to contain over 3,000 rooms elaborately decorated with hieroglyphs and paintings of impressive beauty. Generally, descriptions indicate that the structure consisted of 12 complex courts surrounding an elaborate maze at the center, with a roof made out of a single stone slab, a feat almost impossible to imagine even with modern technology and equipment. One aspect that is not agreed upon in the many accounts of this fantastical place is the reason for constructing such an immense project. Among the alleged purposes are a tomb, a temple, a gathering place for religious ceremonies, or simply a testament to Egypt's power and greatness. Although the many independent accounts leave no doubt as to whether such a structure existed, archaeologists have yet to find such a location, despite identifying several potential sites for further excavation. Hidden Rooms in the Great Pyramid Almost 4,500 years ago, between 2,509 BC and 2,483 BC, the Pharaoh Khufu was ruler of ancient Egypt. During this time, Pharaoh Khufu ordered the creation of the Great Pyramid, a monumental display of power. Built completely for himself, the pyramid itself has more than a 13-acre base and originally had a 479-foot-tall peak. The construction of the Great Pyramid is astonishing. Over 2.3 million blocks of limestone were quarried, cut to specific measurements and then placed into the formation we know today. The Great Pyramid is regarded as one of the wonders of the ancient world. In 2017, scientists studying the pyramid announced that they had found a previously unknown void inside of the pyramid that's estimated to be around 30 meters long. The last time any kind of big structure inside the pyramid was discovered was in the 1800s. This new void was found using a process called muon radiography. This method utilizes cosmic rays to locate voids or cavities inside of structures. This new discovery is being compared to the previously discovered Grand Gallery of the Pyramid. The Grand Gallery is a 150-foot-long corridor that goes directly to the burial room of Khufu, the pharaoh that commissioned this marvel of the ancient world. This corridor is also around 26 feet tall and sits below the newly discovered area. Still, it is completely unknown what or if anything lies within this area and what it was used for. It could be several smaller rooms or one large area we simply do not know. This discovery is still huge. It brings us closer to finally being able to understand and even just know the various intricacies of this truly astonishing structure. This discovery was made by the Scan Pyramids Project working with the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities and is widely regarded as the most impressive achievement of the technique used to find it. We know this large void exists, but we really know nothing else about it. Hopefully, it will potentially validate any ideas of exploring the Great Pyramid further and hopefully understanding it better. Maybe further exploration will uncover more secrets. The Unfinished Egyptian Obelisk There has been a large number of impressive monuments that were constructed in ancient Egypt. Today, we're going to talk about one you may not have heard of, but it is equally impressive. More than 3,500 years ago, it's thought that construction started on what would have been a colossal 42-meter-tall obelisk had its construction been completed. This never happened, however. In Aswan, Egypt, it is theorized that Hatshepsut, a female pharaoh at the time, had ordered this mammoth monument to be created out of granite. An obelisk is a tall monument usually constructed outside ancient temples. They have four sides and taper off towards the top. A lot of obelisks have remained standing throughout history because they were so impressive. 
Civilization was so taken aback by these monuments that even thousands of years later, many of these ancient obelisks still remain to this day. The ancient obelisk found in Aswan, dubbed the unfinished obelisk, was never completed. Due to the sheer size of this particular monument, it would have been the tallest there was at the time by some margin. The large piece of granite it was being formed from cracked as it was freed from the bedrock. It is clear that after this crack formed, construction was stopped completely. However, the site of the obelisk is now an open-air museum that you can visit. This particular monument has allowed us to uncover some of the more interesting secrets of ancient Egyptian architecture as the monuments themselves were actually carved into bedrock. The monuments still left are very much impressive feats of engineering and construction, so for carving them straight out of bedrock to be a common practice at the time is even more mind-blowing. Furthermore, stone balls known as dolerite balls were used to continuously hit the monument to remove any kind of imperfection. The unfinished obelisk shows us that they would have used the very interesting method of carving small holes in the stone and then would fill these holes with dry wood. This dry wood was then continuously doused in water until the expanding wood would break the monument free. The obelisk itself is an incredible engineering feat, obviously, but if it were completed, what kind of method would be used to put up the obelisk that finished, which would have weighed over 1,000 tons? How would they have been transported? This is potentially even more impressive than the monument itself. Nowadays, transporting this kind of monument would require a huge amount of planning. But what do you make of these mysteries from Egypt? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.